In this video, we'll discuss the anatomy of the pelvis. One of the ways to estimate a woman's progress in labor is by assessing the relationship of fetus to certain bony landmarks of the pelvis. Understanding the norms pelvic anatomy helps to detect deviation from normal and facilitate appropriate care. So first of all, we will discuss the pelvic griddle. So pelvic griddle, it comes, comprises of two innominate bones. Here you can see two innominate bones, sacrum and coccyx. It contains and protects the bladder, rectum and internal reproductive organs. Now innominate bone. Each of this innominate bone, it consists of three bones, the ilium, ischium and pubis. A large cup-shaped cavity, you could see the acetabulum is where the head of the femoral articulates. Now what is ilium? This ilium, it has a flayed out part, you could see, this is called the iliac crust. This is the iliac crust. The internal concave interior surface of the ilium, this is known as the iliac fossa. A bony prominence is felt in the front of the iliac crust, in the front of this iliac crust, and this is known as the interior superior iliac spine. So you could mark it like this. So this is the interior superior iliac spine. A short distance below this is the interior inferior iliac spine. There are two similar points at the other end of the iliac crust, namely the posterior, likewise on the other side which will be called as the posterior superior iliac spine and the posterior inferior iliac spine. Now what is the ischium? Here you could see this is the ischium. Ischium it comprises of okay, ischium. Ischium comprises of body and ramus. So ischium lies in the inferior posterior part of the uh, innominate bone and it consists of body and ramus. There is a large prominence, um, it has a large prominence known as the ischial tuberosity. Behind and little above the tuberosity is an inward projection uh, which is known as the ischial spine. This is an important landmark. Here you could see the ischial spine. This is an important landmark in midwifery and obstetrical practice as in labor. The station of fetal head is estimated in relation to the ischial spine, allowing the assessment of progress of labor. Now the pubic. Pubic also has a body and a ramus. It forms the interior part of the pelvis. The two pubic bones meet at symphysis pubis. Here you could see the symphysis pubis. The space enclosed by the body of the pubic bone and the ramus and the ischium is called the obturator foramen, the sacrum. Sacrum is basically a wedge-shaped bone. Here you could see it is a wedge-shaped bone. It comprises of five vertebras the, uh, and forms a posterior wall of the pelvic cavity and it is wedged between the innominate bones. The caudal apex this one is an apex. The sacrum articulates with the coccyx. Here you could see, and uh, the caudal apex articulates with the uh, coccyx, and the upper border of the first sacral vertebra articulates with the fifth lumbar vertebra. You could see the four holes are foramen through which the nerves from the coina equida innervate. Coina equina emerges to innervate the pelvic organ. So this region is known as the coccyx. It is a vestigial tail and it consists of four fused vertebras forming a small triangular bone which articulates with the fifth sacral ligament.